Hey Droid Builders, Matt here. Thought I'd just do a quick breakdown for you guys on uh, Lola. This is Lola version 1. So this is the original files that Dave uh, graciously sent to me to have a play with and do the animatronics. Now, what I've done with this one was pretty quick to get it done for an event. Uh, not much changed from the version 1 files. Uh, this is battery contained within the body. Uh, an Arduino Nano, if you don't know what they are. This is a little microcontroller. You can program it via a USB port into your computer uh, with all free software and everything. Um, that's wedged in there. There's a couple of Christmas tree leftover blue LEDs, which I cut off the old Christmas trees. These are green ones. I got a bunch of blue ones. And two hobby servos, SG90 micro servos so I redesigned the mounts for where these went the hinges are totally different used um, simple wire paper clips everybody has paper clips lying around so with this one it just plays on random times for the sequences so it does a little wing wave to start with the lights turn on and fade on and then just random timings and sequences I ran this at the Comic Con in Melbourne that we had a couple of weeks ago and on a 800 milliamp hour uh, lipo battery it ran for about five six hours just doing that lights on and two servos moving um, and yeah it was great based on that looking at the uh, practicality of how other people could make this and replicate that that's sort of where I went to going forward. Now, I know not everybody knows how to solder or has soldering irons at hand. You can go to a shop and buy a cheap one. It's like a 15 or 30 watt, I think it might be. Soldering iron, like $15 Australian, really cheap. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Some simple solder, just some small stuff in one of these kits or whatever. That's if you want to tackle the soldering. For those that don't know how to solder, I'll turn Lola off. I tried to design it that if you want to, everything on this at the moment, version 2, uh, is not soldered. I have it set up that the cables run up through the base. There's some cables in the bottom here, connected to the switch for the 5 volts. A DC plug coming in off a power wall ward or a DC converter that you have and when you turn that on, the power cable, 5 volts and ground, is just running up the top. And for those that can't solder, hopefully you can have an Arduino Nano plugged into, this is a just a breakout screw terminal board. So you just have a standard screwdriver and you just do the terminals up. And it bites into it and holds it on. So nothing on here is soldered at the moment. So when we turn this on, the Arduino will power up. And then it'll go through the wave sequence on the wings, which is down the bench at the moment. And then the lights will turn on. Now what I have now is some RGB LEDs. So there's some sequences now, random timing. There's a light in here, the flashlight in the dome as well. And then the RGBs, after a while, will turn into Evil Lola. Now all this is on random timing, random sequences. So the wings movements and the lights and everything like that. Um... But as you can see, simple things. These are just the RGB LEDs. And what I have here is just servo extension cables. Well, these are some old ones I had off a 3D printer. But you can just use a standard servo extension cable, shove that in. Yes, you would have to put some kind of tape or hot glue or uh, heat shrink. Now, the idea with this is that there's enough room in the body, said who, that you could push all that down inside the cavity, power up through. The tube into the body and everything's in there and fixed the other bit that needs to come out will be the servos so they'll have to come from 5 volt and ground and then the signal to pins 9 and 10 and the 5 volt and ground will come off the arduino that has a built-in so i have 9 volts coming into the arduino on the v in and ground and then you have 5 volts coming out and ground again going into the servos themselves and that's pretty much it and then that would make the version 2 which I've done everything's fallen off 
the wings just connect onto the switch. The linkages are just uh, servos, small servos, and then paper clips bent up. And that's it. Makes the hinge work. The hinge pin underneath, to keep it simple in there, it's a piece, the black piece, is a piece of filament, pushes into the cavity, and again, that ran on version one for 10 hours now, it ran for two days, and it's fine, you just replace it if it's no good. Uh, there's lines in the code to adjust all the end stops for the motions of the wings, so if it's not low enough or it's too high, the only thing you have to watch is that you don't go over center like that. And now you can see the hinge here, when that comes down, it's in the wrong orientation. It keeps coming off. So you just have to make sure that you don't go over center with the, the rotation of the hinge in here. It has to be below center. So that doesn't, doesn't go past. Um, but hopefully it's quite a simple, straightforward build. That's if you want to do this version. If you want to go further and make it more of a challenge, you can fit a battery in the, in the body here. Been working with Gary on what's best options for batteries. Uh, NICADs are great, they're safe, but they take up too much space. Uh, lithium polymers are fine, but they're not as safe. So we ended up going with a lithium ion battery, which I don't have one at the moment. Um, but it would end up being about 1500 milliamp hours. And that thing should probably run for 10 hours or more, just doing the lights, the LEDs and stuff.